Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Shaper tool in Adobe Illustrator. Now, it's actually much more useful if you're drawing on a tablet, but I'm using a desktop and my mouse, and I'll show you that there's at least one object which I think you can create faster using the Shaper tool than the traditional methods. Now, the Shaper tool is located on the left toolbar. I have the advanced setting instead of the basic setting, which is default. You're going to need the advanced setting, so click on the ellipsis. That's going to open up this little pop-out menu, and in the top right corner, click here, and you can choose advanced instead of basic. Now, once you have the advanced setting, you can come over to the pencil tool, click and hold, and that gives you this fly-out menu, and you can choose the shaper tool. It's keyboard shortcut shift in. Once you have the tool active, you can draw a number of different shapes. And even though you don't draw them perfectly, Illustrator is going to make them perfect. So the first thing we can do is just draw a straight line. That's not really an object, but you can draw a line with the Shaper tool. The next thing that you can draw is a circle. And I'm just going to make kind of a crude attempt here, but Illustrator has turned that into a perfect circle. And if I want an ellipse, instead of a circle, I just kind of draw an elongated object, and Illustrator turns that into an ellipse. I'm going to select that and delete it. Next, I'm going to try to get as close as I can to the measurements of a square and Illustrator recognized that's what I was trying to do and has given me a square. I can also do a rectangle and here's what I end up with. Now I can draw a rectangle that's horizontal or vertical. I can also draw one at a 45 degree angle, but that's the only angle that I can create a rectangle in. I'd have to go back and get the rotate tool, which is keyboard shortcut R, to rotate that object if I wanted it at a different angle. Now, in addition to circles and squares and rectangles, I can create polygons. Now, polygons are objects that have at least three straight sides and three angles. Now, the first one that I think about is a triangle because it has the three sides, and this is actually the one object that I think is faster drawn with the Shaper tool than the traditional methods. The reason I say that is because there's not a keyboard shortcut to create a triangle. So you have to come over and and get the star tool and draw it out and then use the down arrow keys to remove the points hold the shift key down and turn it until you have it sitting upright so this is a much faster method if you get that shaper tool keyboard shortcut shift in and just draw a triangle and you saw how crudely i drew and illustrator still came up with a triangle now the default is always going to be an equilateral triangle which means that all three of the sides are going to be exactly the same i can make some changes but let's go ahead and look at what happens if we make a polygon that has more than three sides i'm going to come over here and draw out one that has let's do seven sides here and illustrator instead of doing the seven sides created six sides so no matter how many sides you place on your polygon anything over three sides is going to divert to six sides you're going to have a hexagon now once you have them drawn you can change the number of sides let me just show you how you do that you click here and then there's this little diamond on the right side of the bounding box and if you click and drag it up you're going to reduce the number of sides and if you drag it down, you're going to increase the number of sides. In addition to that, you have this little round handle, and when you pull on it, you're able to round all the corners. That's going to be the same with your triangle. You have your little diamond to change the number of sides and the handle to change the shape of the corners. With your rectangles and with your squares, you have your traditional four handles to drag the rounded corners and then of course to drag them straight back now the default setting for the color of any object that's created with the shaper tool is a light gray with a one point black stroke all you have to do is click on the object come over to the appearance panel 
and change the color of the object that you've created and you're going to end up with whatever color you select and then if you want to move these objects you click and just drag them around. Now I'm going to get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and select some of these objects and delete them and then let's move these objects over here and let them overlap each other. I'm going to move the pink to the back. I'll use the keyboard shortcut shift command left bracket and that puts it on the back layer of the artboard and if you want to understand more about layers in Adobe Illustrator I have a video that teaches you how to use the layers panel. So we have these three objects and not only could we create them with the shaper tool but we can edit them with the shaper tool and you can use the pathfinder tools to do the same thing if you remember what each one of these do. Now I have videos to show you how to use the shape modes and the pathfinders, but let's see what we can do with the shaper tool. I want to remove the part of this rounded triangle that is overlapping on my pink object here. So I'm going to get the shaper tool keyboard shortcut shift in. And when I hover over these objects, you're going to see where they overlap. And if I just come over here and scribble over the part that's overlapping. I'm able to punch out the color on this overlap. I can do the same thing over here on this side. I'll undo that keyboard shortcut command Z and command Z. Now if I want to remove the fill color of one of my objects then I scribble over the fill and be careful not to touch any of the stroke because if I scribble over the stroke I'm going to lose the entire object. I'll undo that keyboard shortcut command Z and command Z. Now if I want to merge a couple of objects I simply scribble over one and scribble to the next one and whatever the color of the object is that I started the scribble on is going to be the color of the merged objects. Let me undo that keyboard shortcut command Z and I'll show you that if I start with the pink and scribble here it's going to turn out to be pink. And then I'll undo that keyboard shortcut command Z. Now I want to remove the green triangle completely. So I start outside the triangle so that I'm sure to scribble over the stroke part. And then I come all the way over and release my mouse. And that gives me this little cutout here. Now once I've deleted the triangle and I've made changes, I can still edit this because all of these are still live shapes. I still have the shaper tool active. I'm going to double click and that gives me a little dotted line around this group and I'm able to click on these. I'll click on the center here and move this around and then I'm going to come over here to the triangle and I'm going to grab it and we're going to move it and then to get out of this shaper group I'm going to just click on the artboard to delete it. Now I can still go ahead and make some other changes so I'll come over here and let's scribble on this and once I'm completely finished I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V select the object come over to object and expand and I have object fill and stroke checked and I'm going to say OK. Now I have an object that can no longer be edited as a shaper group but I can still enlarge it or reduce it with the bounding box. Now let me show you a couple of practical uses for these items. I'll get the shaper tool keyboard shortcut shift in. I'm going to draw out an ellipse. I can do that just as easily as I can my circle and then I'm going to draw a line sort of across the center here. Illustrator straightens out the line. Now remember we have to scribble over anything that we want to delete so if I just scribble over the bottom part here well I've only gotten rid of the fill color now I go over this line well I've gotten rid of the bottom part of the ellipse but I still have the line here so I gotta go here and I gotta go here. Let me undo that and just show you that what I could have done is scribble across the left line, the object, and the right line. And that's really pretty fast. Now let's make a block of cheese. I'm going to get the shaper tool, keyboard shortcut shift in, and first I'm going to draw out a square. And then I'm going to draw some circles. And I'm going to scribble over these to get rid of the fill color and on the outside I'm being sure to get that outer part of the circle here. 
Now I'm going to click on the object itself and then I'm going to click one more time. And this has given me a little pattern on my object, which means that if I come over to the properties panel and I click on the fill color, this area is going to be changed. So we're going to click on this icon here and we're going to change this to orange and then click on the artboard to deselect it. And one last thing, I can use the Shaper tool to edit objects that were created with traditional tools. I'll get the Rectangle tool, Keyboard Shortcut M, drag out my rectangle, and then I'm going to get the Ellipse tool, Keyboard Shortcut L, and draw out some circles. Then I'm going to get the Selection tool just so I can click on the artboard to deselect that. And I'll get the Shaper tool, Keyboard Shortcut Shift N, and I can do the same thing that I did with the other objects. So if you're trying to get rid of something really quick, this is one way to do it. And there are other ways, of course, you can use the Shape Builder tool or those Pathfinder tools, but at least you know how to do this as well. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial and that you've learned something about the Shaper tool. It's one of those tools where it's just another way to do the same thing in a different way you pick which one's easiest for you. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, do so right now so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials, and I'll look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.